and uh, now i would like to invite uh, dr farah khalik for her session on searching the literature uh, dr mrinalvini uh, you can uh, stop sharing your screen now Good evening, everyone. Uh, I think Dr. Mrinalini's screen is still visible. Yes, yes. Dr. Mrinalini, are you there? Anyways, by that time, I'll just ask the participants uh, to be more interactive in this session, and I want to keep this hands on. So I want you all to uh, just practice whatever I'm uh, I'm telling you to search the literature because this is a topic of searching the biomedical literature. So I would like that you keep on searching the literature. You can either open another window of the search engine where you can search the literature or you can use another device. Say if you are on laptop, you can use your mobiles also and search the literature. Right. So first of all, before beginning the session, I would like to thank Dr. Amir and the Medical Education Unit for giving me this opportunity. Uh, to present this session. Uh, so I'll just start sharing my screen now. OK. All right, so. So the topic is searching biomedical literature. So what is the you to answer okay, what is the use? Why do you want to search the literature? See if you have decided on a particular topic and your guide and you uh, have told you to do on a particular subject or you're very much interested in a particular topic. Still, why do you want to search the literature? Can anyone answer this question? You can unmute yourself and answer. Yes, ma'am. Yes, um, so because uh, because if uh, but uh, whatever topic we have selected for our research, if that has been done already, we can get to know uh, what uh, in what way we have to proceed further, or do we even need to do that study or not? If the our results have already been established, we might not even need to do that research. Very good. Or, Very good. This is the primary purpose. What else? Yes, please continue. And uh, um, uh, we can get. The for example, if some research have been done uh, and we can conclude uh, only one thing about it, we might okay. get another prospects to it. Our research. Very good. Very good. Anything else anyone wants to add? She has very aptly said that what is the purpose of doing a research? You want to know whatever is existing, whatever actually you start with a research question, as just now Dr. Minani told us how to start with a research question. Something interesting is coming in your mind and you want to do that particular research. Now, what is already being done in that particular field? You want to know what is already being done. And the most important thing is okay, what is the gap in knowledge in that particular topic? Because that is what you want to fill by doing your research, isn't it? Then you also need to know what are the contradictions like in some of the topics there can be two opinions and you need you you want to prove that particular thing is correct or not so basically these are the the, the causes why uh, the purpose mainly where you need to search the literature and to find out exactly how much work is done in that particular topic and what are the gaps which you can fill with your work which you will be doing but for doing this Literature had to, uh, has to be uh, searched properly and thoroughly. OK, so here I have uh, posed a research question. Does chronic exposure to mobile phones affect cognition? Suppose this is my research question. And if you want to search this research question, what are you going to do? You're going to go uh, to the library, maybe you're going to search the journals, you're going to search the books. And the most common thing which is done these days is search the web. What do you do? Which which uh, uh, engine you use most commonly? Can anyone tell me what do you use when you're searching something? Uh, most commonly we are searching the web only. Google, isn't it? Um, you're searching the Google. Very good. So now just if you can start another window and just open your Google. 
and just write the keywords from this research question, mobile phone and cognition. I want all of you to do this uh, side by side, then only you will properly understand how to search the literature. OK, and all those who are able to do it, please let me know the results. How many results you are getting? Open the Google engine, the search engine and just type the keywords of our research question, mobile phone and cognition. Yes, has anyone done that? Around 55 lakhs. OK, so someone is saying in lakhs. When I searched, I got in crores. OK, this was my result when I ser searched in Google. So is it feasible for you to read these many articles, these many topics and come out with something? Is it feasible? No, it's not feasible. And uh, secondly, what is here is that Google is giving you everything which is prevalent on that topic. Mostly it will be irrelevant for your research. It will be giving whatever is coming in the news, in the newspapers, in the magazines and of course from journals also, but all irrelevant material will also be visible here once you are doing the Google search, a simple Google search. So what you're getting is an information overload, which is not feasible to manage for you. So the next option is Google Scholar. So how do you get Google Scholar? You can go to Google and just type Scholar. You will get this icon. Uh, you will get this particular um, uh, link and you just click it and you will be entering the Google Scholar. And again, you type your uh, these terms. Can the person who has uh, all those who have already typed the two keywords, mobile phone and cognition, please copy them because we'll be pasting it at various places and uh, we will be constantly searching the literature right now in this session. Please, please practice it uh, here only. Please try to search it here. OK, so the person who has all those who have opened the Google Scholar, please type these keywords and see how much you are getting. This is what I got, but how much you are getting. Has anyone done that? Anyways, uh, with Google, my result was around one crore with Google Scholar. It has decreased to around one lakh. OK, so we have now um, uh, uh, decreased the results because now it has come. Only the scholarly articles have come in front of us. It has eliminated non scholarly articles and we are getting just the scholarly articles. Now coming to our main. Uh, uh, the type this at least you have to open the page of PubMed though then only you will be able to understand all the uh, different portions of PubMed and how to work on them. All right, just open this. Just type on Google PubMed. You will get this particular thing link. Just click on it. Once you click on it, you're going to get this page. Has anyone got this? Yes, ma'am. OK, very good. You have got it. Because you all need to open this PubMed only, then only you will be able to understand. I can just speak for so uh, so long, but it will be just a passive a passive listener will not be able to understand that much. OK, so once you you have got this, I told you to copy these keywords. You have you must have pasted it here, mobile phone and cognition and just press the search button. Now you tell me how much you have got. This was my search. I got around 1320 results. Maybe it, it can vary because uh, I'll tell you how it will vary, but it can vary, but this is the result. So now it is still feasible. And now whatever we have got in this PubMed search is the biomedical research. And that too from the standard journals, a very high impact and standard journals are all indexed in PubMed. Although there are various other journals which may not be indexed in PubMed, so we will be searching at other sites also, but all the standard journals and all the standard things are there in PubMed, so it's better to first search in the PubMed. So now we have decreased our search result and it has come to something like 1300 or something, whatever it is, that, that much result has come, so it's still feasible. You can uh, read these articles and come to certain conclusion in your research. But even if you are doing it on PubMed, there is a systematic approach to searching. You just don't uh, do it as you do in Google. 
and just type the keywords and whatever is coming you are reading. Then again, it will be very difficult for you to compile all your results and um, uh, to find out what exactly you want to. So now there's a systematic approach and I'll be telling you how you have to proceed systematically when you are going to search any uh, the literature on a particular topic. So this is a topic or maybe a research question. You can say does chronic exposure to mobile phones impair cognition in children? I have added children here, right? So uh, just now what Dr. Minali told you that there's a PICO model. You have to take into consideration all these four points. First is the patient or population or the problem which we are going to see. Second is the intervention or exposure. Then there's, there's a comparison and then lastly there is an outcome. OK, so for this research question, if we fit into these terminologies, then patient or population here in our case is children. The intervention or exposure here is mobile phone exposure. Comparison is not there in this case and outcome is impaired cognition. This is what we want to see whether the exposure to mobile phone is causing impairment in cognition in children. Right, so you have to identify uh, these four points and then you can start using your keywords when you start searching the literature. Right now there is one very important point here is that you don't need to type the stop words. All of the words which are there in your statement in your question, there will be number of words uh, and the uh, does etc etc. So you don't need to type all these words. You just need to type your keywords. OK, so the most important point is you have to stop uh, avoid using the stop words in your search. Then there are certain Boolean operators. Boolean operators are or and and not. So what do you mean by these Boolean operators? Like these were the two main keywords of our research question that is mobile phones and cognition. These were the two uh, research um, uh, keywords and if I put or in between. What do I get in my when I search it? What do I get? I will get all the articles which contain mobile phone, all these blue ones which contain the mobile phone in them and all the articles which are having cognition, which are dealing with cognition, right? So if I put or in between, I'll be getting all these and I'll be getting lot of literature, anything uh, which is considering mobile phones and anything which is uh, which has taken into consideration the cognition part will come and we get all that. The second operator is and if I put and in between these two mobile phones and cognition. I will get only those articles which contain both these terms together. That's what I want, isn't it? I want to study the impact of mobile phone on cognition, so I want to put and that's why I told you to put and in between when you were searching. So if I put and I will get only those articles which have got a combination of mobile phone and cognition. Right? Now the third one is not in between the two. So when I'm putting not, that means I am using mobile phone like mobile phones and not cognition. That means I'm avoiding all the research which is done on mobile phones, but it is not done on the subject of cognition. Maybe mobile phones are affecting various other systems of our body, but we want to avoid cognition. So in that case, because many a times in your review and all you want to write other aspects also, okay, how mobile phone is affecting other parts of our body. So in that case, it will be easier if you search by putting not because it will exempt the cognition. And then you will be uh, seeing all other aspects of the mobile phone use. This is clear, clear to all. Shall we proceed? Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yes, ma'am. I would like to interact with the students. I think that will be better. OK, so like uh, I have shown here that mobile phones or I have put in uh, here in between mobile phone and cognition when I have inserted or you can see it is six lakh plus results are appearing on the screen. So, so many because it has considered all the articles relevant to mobile phone and all the articles relevant to cognition. Here I have put and. And by putting and what we are getting is only the articles relevant to mobile phone considering both these keywords together and here hence my result is coming 1320 here uh, according to my search. And here I have put not 
So it is considering all the mobile phone articles, so it's quite a lot of them, but it's considering all the mobile phone articles, but not cognition, maybe many other things which are coming with the mobile phone. So I hope this much is clear how to use these terms, where to use these terms when you are searching on PubMed. Now the important things you should remember while you are using Boolean operators is that they should be in capital letters. And or or not, whatever you are using, it must be in capital letters. If you're using lowercase operators, it will be automatically replaced by and. OK, so it has to be capital letters and the order of terms is crucial. This will I'll be telling you later on when we'll be going to advanced search. And the quotes group phrases together. That means if there is a term which you want it together like diabetic retinopathy, you want all the articles relevant to diabetic retinopathy. It's better to put it put it in the inverted commas. OK, even mobile phones should be put in the inverted commas. That will be better because then it will consider it as a single term and uh, uh, and search accordingly. Right, so you have to put these terms in the inverted commas. There's another thing known as field search. By field search, we mean if you want something in the title, we have to type in square brackets TI. If you want it in title and abstract, then in square brackets TIAF, uh, AB, sorry. And if you want to search by journal name, then JOUR. And similarly, you can see other things if you want to search a particular author, AU in square brackets. So what's important here, you are putting it in the square brackets and accordingly you can search even the author, even the, the journal name or whatever thing you want. There is one exercise I would like you to do right now. You can search the articles of your supervisor. Now most of you must have been allotted a supervisor, I think by now. OK, supervisor must have been allotted, so either you can search the article of your supervisor or if you do not, uh, if the supervisor has not been allotted, I'm giving you one example of Dr. Um, S. V. Madhu, who is an eminent endocrine, uh, endocrinologist here in our institute and a very, uh, very good uh, research person here. So you can search his articles if you don't have a supervisor right now. So whenever you are typing the name of the author and you're searching by the name of author, what, what you should remember is don't put doctor in front. Put the surname first and then the initials. Like Madhu SV and then in square bracket you have to write AU for author. OK, I hope people are doing this and if you have done it, please let me know. Even if you are searching the name, uh, the articles of your supervisor, write the surname there, then the initials and then in square bracket write AU. OK, I'll proceed then. So when I searched by this, or typing this on the PubMed, I got these many results, right? So this is one of the ways when you can search the name of uh, by means of author. So you can search because all of you need to search the the work done by your supervisors, like what in what field they are working, what they have done till now. Then uh, I think it will be better if you have a survey of that also. Now my second uh, uh, work is if your guide told you to search an article he has read on diabetes published by Professor S. V. Madhu in Functional Neurology Journal. OK, your guide will give you a number of assignments. Now you'll be going to search number of things and he might ask you to go and uh, find out an article of in a particular journal. It was published. I don't remember exactly, but it was uh, published by this this author in this this journal. So then this is the way how you need to uh, to search that particular thing. Now you have got two things here. You have got the name of author and you have got the name of the journal here. OK, you want to search this particular author and, uh, and your gu guide is sure that this was published in Functional Neurology Journal, so you know the name of the journal, right? So it's very easy to search now. Instead of uh, roaming about here and there, you can just type Madhu SVAU as an author and in between and the name of the journal and then in square brackets JOUR for journals and you will easily get the exact article which your guide wants. Right, you will come directly to that particular article. So what I told you in the field search is the because with the field search, the things become quite easy. You can directly uh, go to that article and no need to search and search and then uh, uh, make it long process. So there are a number of things which you can learn here to make the search quite easy. Another very important thing is um, 
a comprehensive search using wildcard. That is, there are a number of words like uh, prevention, preventive, preventable. You can see here. Now, if you are uh, if you're just typing prevention, you may be avoiding preventive and other terms which are starting with it. So for that, you need to write the initial part of that word like prevent will be common for all. Put an asterisk and put them in inverted commas. Right, so when you do this, the PubMed will understand that you are you are searching for words which are starting with prevent. So it will consider all the words as shown here will be considered in your search and you will be getting everything in that because you know something comes in your mind that you have to search diarrhea. Suppose something comes in your mind, but you're not sure of the spelling. It can be an American spelling. It can be British and all that. It varies and it can be diarrhea or some other variation of that word. So for that, it's essential to use the initial part, which is common for all these words. Put in asterisks and put them in inverted commas. So that will include all the words which has to be considered. Now another important thing uh, is and very important for searching the literature is using filters. Now for using filters, I'll just uh, take you to the PubMed site where I can explain you how to use the filters. So here I will type PubMed. OK, and I'll type my keywords. Type my mobile phone and cognition, my keywords, and I'll click search. So now I have come to the site of PubMed. Now I want to show you what are the different filters. So first of all, we'll start on the left side. There will be a lot of filters here. What you observe here is this graph is showing that how much literature has been published on these keywords, on these keywords in these years, starting from 1999 to 2022. Right, so much has published in 2020, in 2021, and all that. Okay, now if you want just to search for the past 10 years, you can just scroll it. Okay, instead of for 99, you can just I'll just show it to you. You can scroll it here. You want to proceed from 2010 onwards, you can keep it here. So all the articles relevant from 2010 to 2020 will come in front of you. 22. Right? So you can scroll both the ends of it and accordingly whichever years you want, you can adjust and accordingly the articles will come to you. Next in filters are these you want abstract of free full text or another full text or you want some clinical trials. Maybe someone is doing a clinical trial or maybe some meta analysis and they want just uh, if there is any clinical trial done on this particular topic earlier or not. So they just have to click this box. So they'll come to know whatever clinical trials are done on this particular topic, or maybe you just need a review article or all that. OK, so accordingly you can click this particular box and come to it. Then you can go with the publication date, maybe last 10 years or five years or whatever you want. You can go with the language and um, actually here it is showing just one language, but there is one term written here additional filters. You just click on this additional filters. A box will open up there it is going to tell you what all these things you can choose from it. So one is the article type. Anyone which you want, uh, you can click. And if you are not clicking anyone, it is going to present everything in front of you. So in the initial stages, if you're not specific for any uh, any particular thing, you can just don't click anything. Uh, everything will come to you. Next is species, like some people want to just see the animal studies, so they have to click this particular uh, box. Then we come to language. So I have already clicked English because we want articles only in English. So this was already clicked with me uh, by me. OK, we just want articles in English, then uh, sex, the journal, then age. Now in age also, if I just want to click maybe children and children also, maybe I want children between 6 to 18 years. So I'll click this box and this box. So it will include 6 to 12 years and till 18 years, right? So once I have done this, now I will click on show. So once it is, I have clicked show, all these things will come on this particular window of the PubMed main page. OK, this doesn't mean that this fil these filters have been selected. It doesn't mean that these are selected. They have just come on the front page. Now when you want to select it, you have to tick these boxes and select them. Like now I have chosen one box that is 13 to 18 years of age. I can click another box, 6 to 12 years of age, so all the articles relevant to that age group. You can see the number of articles decreasing. Now we have uh, marginalized our search to just the children. 
that to of a particular age group. So now we have decreased the search because if someone is working on pediatrics, then he, they doesn't want, they don't want to see what is happening in adults. They usually focus on children and so on, right? So you have to select whatever you want here, right? You can select here and of course English because there are a number of articles in German or Dutch which you, you won't be able to understand. So no need to look into it. So you can select that also and accordingly we will get these articles. Right, so apart from these filters which we are selecting, there are various other options also on the top. You can see save. So whatever you have searched today, you can just save it. You can just click it. It will be saved. It can be saved like if I click this, all results of this page or the selections because you whatever you like now articles, uh, they you have to select on these boxes. The boxes are given you. Suppose I like uh, number two, but I don't like number three, so I'll not uh, tick on the, that box. Only the ones which I like or are relevant to me, I'll tick on that and accordingly they will be. You have to save them. You can email them at that moment only. You can email to which to wherever you want or you can click this button send to. It can either go to clipboard or my bibliography or collections and all. You can actually open your account in um, uh, this library. You can log into your account and everything will go to your account and it will be saved here. And it's very good practice to save whatever you have searched today because the searching of literature is not just a one day job. It takes many, many days to search literature, so it's always good that you're sitting for one hour or two hours today and searching the literature. Whatever you have searched, save it somewhere. So that next day when you come, you are again searching and you're not repeating the same thing, right? So you have to save it. Then there are certain other options also visible here, like you can see display options. So how you want to, it to be displayed on the screen, like uh, maybe you want summaries or best match or the latest ones first, the most recent ones, and then how many on one page, maybe 10 or 20, whatever you can adjust. So you can just scroll through this pages and just try out all the options. You will uh, learn these things um, very well and it will become very easy for you to, uh, to search the literature. Secondly, one more important thing is that when you are searching something and you have used a particular keyword today, just note it down somewhere either in your diary or in an MS Word file. Just write it today. I'll use mobile phone next time. I may be using some other keyword, so uh, that will be very, very helpful that I have already uh, searched with these keywords. Now I'll be searching with some new ones. Right, so this was all about what is present on the screen. Yeah, one more thing which is left on the screen and that is you can see suppose I like this particular article. I want this particular article. I, I can say uh, I can select this article. I can take this article, uh, but I think only abstract is available of this article. There are a number of other articles where free text. See here it is written free PMC article. The full text will be available of this particular article here. So if you click it, you will get the full text of this article, but all the articles full text is not available on this site. Only abstracts are available. And when you want to cite this article, just click on this side button. You will see the whole reference. You can just click on this copy and copy it and paste it somewhere where you are collecting all your references. So the full made um, Vancouver style reference is available here on this site. So you can just cite whatever article you select or you think it's relevant to you. Just click on the site, copy it and paste it. Secondly, you can share that particular article with someone you want. So that can also be done from this particular place. Now coming to the advanced search, there is one more button like uh, this one known as advanced search here. So for you, uh, for um, when you're searching the topic, if you click that view, a new page opens up and this is the advanced search page. Now here, uh, whatever you are searching, first of all, let me see if in the history, there are so many things because whatever search it came here, so I'm just deleting my history and then I'll proceed with yours. So whatever I'm searching here, you have to put your keyword. Like suppose my keyword was mobile phone. And you add the searches so it will come here. In the query box it will come that I'm searching mobile phone. But many articles may not be using the keyword mobile phone. They may be using it as cell phone. OK, so I have to type all those words also here cell phone and then you have to add it here, but then mobile phone and cell phone are actually similar things, so you have to add with or. Because any article having either mobile phone or cell phone that I want, right? So this will also come in the query box. Then third thing, maybe some people are using smartphones, so you have to type that also. 
with or we add here. So we have got all the synonyms possible which we can think of. OK, and we have put it here in the. Uh, in the query box, then you go here. You don't start searching right now. You just click here and add it to the history. So once you click add to the history, your history page starts here. You can see one hashtag one is started with all the keywords which you have used, including the filters because I have already applied the filters of children below between 6 to 18 years of age. So that filter is also there, but all my mobile phone or cell phone because I want articles. They may be using mobile phone term. They may be using cell phone or they may be using smartphone term. So I want all that to be included in it. Next keyword, my next keyword was cognition. So I'll type now here cognition. I will uh, add to the query box it uh, this thing also. Now some other term maybe people are using. They are not using cognition because cognition is a combination of number of terms so maybe intelligence. So I will write that also. Intelligence with or. Adding with or so intelligence is also added. Maybe I want to search memory also so. Memory with or. It's added so you can see here in the query box all these things. The similar terms needs to be separated by or right and now again I'm going to click this add to history. So this these things are also added to my history. So you can see here hashtag one was all the terms related to mobile phone and two is all the terms related to cognition. Right, whatever I think are the terms which may be there in the uh, in the literature that I have written here. Now I want to search these terms. So there are two options. What we can do here is either we can just type here. Hash one. And. Which are there in hashtag one and two will come on this and just. Click now don't add to history. Click search. So you will get the, all the articles which are relevant with these keywords in the search. OK, the second way of putting it in the search boxes instead of putting. Instead of putting hashtag one and two, we can directly go to these three dots and you can see it is add query or delete or create alert, whatever it is you can. Uh, if you want to delete a particular um, thing which you have uh, by mistake added in the history, but you don't want it now, you can delete it or you can just add it to the query. It will come here on this box. Then again, you go to two. And you add with and now because it's another keyword we have to add with and so we'll be putting and here and then the other keywords which were there in hashtag two. So these all are added. So all our terms are now added along with the filters which we had applied for search. And now when we click search again, it's the same thing which I have told you the same type of search will come. So now we are uh, I mean uh, we have narrowed down a search to children and adolescents of this particular age group and having a, uh, whatever our keywords are accordingly we have searched them right so coming uh, back to my this is all i can tell you oh, okay one more thing in the advanced search i would like to tell you and that is mesh terms see at the bottom of it it's written mash that is the meaning of mash is medical subject headings okay so if you if i click that mesh will come here and again, if I uh, type here, say cognition. All the subject headings related to these terms will come. So maybe something is not coming in my mind, but they are also uh, they are always there in the PubMed. There are a number of terms added up to the PubMed. They're deleted and added the constant process going on. So if I'm not able to think over okay, how this term uh, must be used in my literature, so it can be cognition disorders. It can be social cognition. It can be metacognition and so on. So there can be number of uh, 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 relevant terms which are already there in MASH, which you can select and then start searching. Like very common thing is blood pressure. So if you are working on blood pressure, if you're just um, searching with uh, blood pressure, you are uh, just searching blood pressure, but an article may not be giving it just blood pressure. It may be giving arterial pressure. So you will be missing that article if you have not seen all these terms, OK? Or it may be blood pressure monitors or venous pressure or hypotension or hypertension also. You are missing that term and it is there. So mesh helps us to um, to to identify the terms, 
to uh, although you need to there are a number of terms which may be there but is not there in the mesh and secondly what you don't remember may be in the mesh so accordingly you have to put your brain also in the searching the keywords and you can use the mesh also to search the keywords and accordingly you can search okay now if i suppose go to blood pressure then there will be a certain some sub subheadings also into it so there are mesh headings which we have seen now there are a number of subheadings also it can be maybe analysis maybe etiology maybe treatment maybe therapy pharmacology physiology whatever you want to search accordingly you can pick up your keywords and search right so that is in the advanced search so going back to my ppt i think i have told you all about the filters I have told you about the how to use filters. I have told you about the advanced search. Just flipping through. What is mesh? I have told you it is going to group the terms into concepts and uh, it is constantly being revised with addition and deletion. So that's going on. So that is also there. And uh, how we have already searched it uh, and dive. So that I've told you. Headings and subheadings, display settings also I have explained. So coming to the summary of literature search, what you're going to do is. First of all, pick a search topic, so you have to uh, select a, a research question or a topic, then divide it into concepts, that is the keywords. Find the keywords yourself or subject headings from mesh to represent these concepts, to search these concepts. Then you have to uh, combine these concepts with Boolean operators like and, or, or not. Then you have to refine your search by using different filters, which can be of different types, which I've told you. And once you have done the complete search, then you have to save your search in a particular place. OK, so that's all in the PubMed search. I would like to thank uh, Rajat, Arjun, Rohan and Siddharth from where I took some important uh, points to be included in my PowerPoint and special thanks to Dr. Amir for uh, very, very cooperative and helping in every way and Medical Education Unit UCMS. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Uh, yeah. uh, this was an uh, important session uh, because now the uh, um, all the postgraduates must be at this time searching the various literature that is related to their topic, their research question or their aim, aim and objectives depends upon how much they have finalized till now. So uh, uh, I think the students might have questions later on when they do the search in this particular manner using PubMed and Google Scholar. So uh, if, if any of the postgraduate students wants uh, uh, further some more information or some more help support regarding this, you can contact the faculty even later in their respective departments. Uh, so uh, thank you, Dr. Farah. I think we will move on to the next session now.